What's up everyone, welcome back to the channel. It's been a while since I made a video. I know, I know, uh, I apologize, I've just been so busy. But uh, today I figured we'd pull the Buick out. We're gonna make a little video about what actually is a WE4. A lot of people confuse these with Grey Nationals that don't know, and I'm gonna help clarify what the differences are. So should be a good day, hopefully get the drone up in the air and get some good uh, rolling shots. So uh, come on, let's go do this and uh, have some fun. Yeah, this looks like a good spot. Um, doesn't look like there's gonna be any traffic back here, so we should be okay. I'm gonna throw this up on the tripod and uh, we can talk a little bit about what actually a WE4 is. And uh, you guys hopefully will learn something today. If not, hey, hopefully you enjoy the video anyway. But um, let me get this up on some sticks and we'll uh, we'll get set up. I think, uh, like I said, we got a good area here. Um, we're just next to a soccer field and uh, pretty much in an industrial park. So. This is a dead end that way, so I don't suspect any traffic coming through. All right, so what is a WE4? A WE4 is an RPO code that signifies the package for which this particular car was made. Um, 87 model year only. It was basically the closest thing you could get to being a Grand National without being an actual Grand National. So a WE4 is a package that was offered on the 1987 Buick Regals that made it very similar to the 87 Grey National except for the color of the interior, the badging, the bumper braces, and the wheels. So that's what this says, but to break it down, in essence, it was the wheels. The WE4 came with an aluminum um, silver style wheel that uh, was same width as the Grey Nationals, just different style. I've never had them on my car, so I don't exactly have an example I can show you, but I can put a picture right here so you see them. So those are the style wheels. Um, the aluminum bumper braces, those were lighter than the counterparts on the Grand Nationals. Um, also the aluminum brake drums, I didn't see that mentioned in here, but the aluminum brake drums also saved weight, therefore making a little bit lighter. You could get them optioned with a hard top, T-tops, or a rare Astro moonroof option um, I haven't never seen one of those in person but they are pretty rare and they are out there and all in all there were 1547 of these made so in essence they are one of the rare type models that were ever made for the turbo regals uh, they were never numbered so there's no way of telling this is you know number 1000 or this is number five unfortunately they just came off the assembly line uh, I guess in the same manner that a, a regular Turbo Regal Grey National uh, did as well. So there's no way of knowing what number it is or even how many uh, still exist to this day. And in my opinion, I think Buick probably did this on purpose, but they made exactly a thousand more WE4s than they did of the ever famous GNX. There are only 547 of them, so I guess they did this on purpose. Either way, I think it's pretty cool, um, but again, there's no way of knowing what sequential number this is. But hey, it's one of their rare models, so that's pretty cool. A lot of people confuse this car with a Grand National. It's understandable, it looks just like it. People call it the wannabe, people call them T-types, people call them turbo T's, people just refer to them as WE4's. Um, I like it, the fact that it's a little bit different. Yeah, it does get confused as a Grand National, but I don't mind. People joke, call it a wannabe, that's cool with me. I'll take it. So how do I like owning a WE4? It's the stepchild, if you will. You get called a wannabe, you get called a T-type. At the end of the day, it's a turbo T WE4. 
A lot of people don't even know that in 87 they dropped the T-Type and just went to Turbo T. And that's what the badge on the side of the car indicates. It's just a square T, so that's what it is, a Turbo T. Um, you know, I don't mind. I think it's cool. Great. Having to explain it to someone who's not familiar, eh, pain in the butt sometimes. Because they roll down the street and they see a black Buick with the blackout package and they assume, look, it's a Grand National. No, it's a Turbo T WE4, but whatever. WE4, Grand National, still the same car at the end of the day. You just might pull a little bit more value. That's one thing I want to talk about too is value. Just because they made 1,547 of these doesn't make them more desirable. Um, I think for those of us who own them, it's cool. It's a little piece of history, but at the end of the day, is it worth more than a, a Turbo T non-WE4? Same miles and everything? Probably not, but you know what? That's okay. I, I'm, I'm not looking to sell mine anytime soon, so value to me doesn't really matter, only when it comes to insurance. And we all know we can get them insured for pretty much whatever we want nowadays because of the desirability or the collectability of the vehicles. So when I bought this car, you know, I had to look up and find out what it was. I didn't know what a WE4 was when I started looking at uh, Turbo Regals. I was brand new into them, so I was just was like, oh, it's a Grand National, but it's got a blackout package. Oh wait, it's not a Grand National, it's a Turbo T. It's got everything but the interior, the wheels, and a few small things. And you know what? I like not having a spoiler. Um, some guys love the look of the spoiler, and I get that, but the spoiler's not for me. I like to keep it off, so that's why I don't have a spoiler on mine. Um, I have seen W4s with spoilers, and I'm not knocking them, but at the end of the day, that's just not for me. I like mine with no spoiler. Um, and these cars particularly did not come as optioned as Grand Nationals, so that helped keep the price down a little bit. So it actually allowed for more people to uh, buy them, which was pretty cool. One thing that my car has that I'd never seen in any other Grand National Turbo Regal, and it came from the dealer that sold the car, is... There's a sticker on the driver's side door jam that I'll show you in just a second that indicates the selling dealer, the gentleman who bought it new, how many miles were on the car upon delivery, what date he took delivery, and actually what warranty he bought as well. So that's pretty cool. So if you guys have one of those stickers in your door jams, let me know. I'd love to see it because it's not something I've seen on any other Turbo Regal that uh, I've ever uh, encountered out in the wild. So I thought it was pretty cool. All right, guys. That's it for another episode. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to hit that like button. Hit subscribe. I appreciate each and every one of you help growing this channel. I got a few more ideas left before the winter actually hits and New Jersey dumps this shitty snow on us. So go ahead, hit that subscribe button so you can stay tuned for future content. Otherwise, I appreciate each and every one of you. I'll see you later. Peace. You won't put that drone up in the air? Yeah.